Welcome, dear friends, to the service for Sunday, the 21st of April. I do pray that we will all be blessed as we share in this time together. In our parish, the birthdays on the 21st of April, Keegan de Prier, and the 26th of April, Renata Bowers. We do wish you both a very happy birthday and pray that the year ahead will be blessed. Anniversaries on the 27th of April, Adrian and Michael Cleary celebrate their wedding anniversary. Congratulations, and we do pray that there would be many more to come. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Praise the Lord. Praise him, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his name, now and forever. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. 
You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So let us confess our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with our neighbour. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on us, pardon our sins and set us free from them, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Fourth Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Good Shepherd, you reveal your love for all and call them by name. Grant that all who hear your voice may follow where you lead, for you live and reign in the unity of the Blessed Trinity, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 4, reading verses 5 to 12. The next day the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and everyone else in Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you completely healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Hear the word of the Lord. Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He will make me lie down in green pastures, and lead me beside still waters. He will refresh my soul and guide me in right pathways for his namesake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff comfort me. You spread a table before me in the face of those who trouble me. 
You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup will be full. Surely your goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This morning's second reading is taken from 1 John chapter 3, reading verses 16 to 24. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has and does, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. Dear children, this is the last hour. As you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many, many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For they, if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar? It is the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a man is the Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. No one denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. See that what you have heard from the beginning remains in you. If it does, you will remain in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he promised us, even eternal life. Hear the word of the Lord. The good news is proclaimed in the 10th chapter of St. John, beginning at the 11th verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. I am the good shepherd who is willing to die for the sheep. When the hired man, who is not a shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees a wolf coming, he leaves the sheep and runs away. So the wolf snatches the sheep and scatters them. The hired man runs away because he is only a hired man and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. As the Father knows me, and I know the Father, in the same way I know my sheep, and they know me. And I am willing to die for them. There are other sheep which belong to me that are not in this sheepfold. I must bring them too. They will listen to my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. The Father loves me because I am willing to give up my life in order that I may receive it back again. No one takes my life away from me. I give it up of my own free will. I have the right to give it up and I have the right to take it back. This is what my Father has commanded me to do. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. It's quite a challenge to preach on this fourth Sunday of Easter without talking about sheep and shepherds. They are featured prominently in today's readings, as they are every year on this particular Sunday, which has become known as Good Shepherd Sunday. The image of God as our shepherd and Jesus as our good shepherd is such a familiar one. But I have to wonder to myself, is it still of help to us? It seems to be rather old and old fashioned. In biblical times, everyone knew what a shepherd was. It would have been a very familiar and helpful metaphor. David would certainly understand what he was writing about when he wrote the psalm, because of course he was a shepherd. But is this image of the shepherd and the sheep still relevant to us? 
Well, I think it is. Somehow this image continues to speak to us as people of faith. Psalm 23 is still one of our most beloved psalms and passages in Scripture. Jesus, as the Good Shepherd, is still one of the most familiar ways of thinking of him and of picturing him. The image that I get from these readings is one of abundance. If you think about it, we talk about Good Shepherd, we talk about green pastures, streams of water, a laid table, no fear, being protected, goodness and loving kindness abounding. So with that in mind, I want to ask the following questions. I ask them of myself and of all of us. Does my life matter? Does your life matter? Do we make a difference? And if so, how? I suspect that we all struggle with these questions or questions very much like them. I'm pretty sure that at some level they're always with us. We want to be able to say yes for ourselves. I think that is part of the reason for our busyness. We're trying to show that our lives matter and that we make a difference. We are in some way seeking fulfillment. It's often the unstated, maybe even the unknown reason why, especially when we are young and developing in our careers, we work so hard. We've got to prove ourselves. We've got to acquire. We've got to achieve because we want to make sure that people know, and more importantly, that we know that our life matters and makes a difference. We've probably all had times when we look back on our life, maybe when our kids move out or when we retire, and we ask ourselves what we've done with our lives and whether we've made a difference in this world. Quite often when you visit people in hospitals or frail care, you hear people saying, I'm just ready to go. I don't want to be here. I don't understand what God is doing. Why am I still hanging around? I can't help but wonder if these questions are really asking whether our lives matter and what difference we make to others. Perhaps people are asking the question, are they of value? Regardless of when or how these questions come up, I think they are grounded in a deep longing and a desire for abundance in our life. We want to be an abundant people. We want to live an abundant life. Today's Gospel begins with verse 11, but I want to begin with verse 10, in which Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. That verse is right in the middle of what is often called the Good Shepherd Discourse. So I want to look at that passage this morning in relationship to this issue of abundance. Where do you or I experience abundance in our lives and what does it look like? What does abundance mean for you? What does it feel like when you live apart from or distanced from abundance? I'm not talking about abundance in terms of quantity. It's not about quantity. Abundance is a quality of life. It's a way of being. We can all tell stories of times in our life when there was something we wanted and we worked really hard or we waited a long time for and we finally got that thing we wanted. However, once we had it, it didn't do what we thought it would. It didn't fill us up. It didn't fulfill. It didn't satisfy. We got what we wanted, but we had no abundance. One commentator puts it like this. Abundance is that quality of life that lets us touch the deepest part of ourselves. It connects us with the divine, with the holy, and with what's good true and beautiful in this world. It's not so much about getting something we don't have, but living more fully into what is already present. So that abundance is love that leads to love. It's joy that leads to joy. It's peace that leads to peace. It's kindness that leads to kindness. It's stepping more deeply and more fully into our own life and into the life of another. It never adds to the pain of the world. Abundance is Jesus' way of being in this world. It is the presence of God lived through your life and my life. When you hear about the Good Shepherd, who do you think of? 
Well, first answer is Jesus. Yes, of course, that's the usual answer and that's correct. We don't dispute that. But could that be something more than simply Jesus? Could it be you or I that are the Good Shepherd? Who have been the Good Shepherds in our lives? Think about what Psalm 23 says about the Shepherd. What does the Shepherd do? The Shepherd leads and guides. The Shepherd revives. The Shepherd protects. The Shepherd companions. The Shepherd nourishes and feeds. The Shepherd sets a table of welcome and hospitality in the difficult places of life. When have you experienced that in your life? Have you ever had someone guide you in your life? Has someone ever set a table for you and welcomed you? Who's fed and nourished your soul? Have you ever had someone companion and walk with you through the valley of the shadow of death? Were they not good shepherds to you? Have you ever had someone say or do just the right thing and he or she has revived your soul when you just simply couldn't do it for yourself? Well, how about those times when you did things for someone else? You set the table. You were the guide. You were the companion. You were the reviver. You were the good shepherd. I think that this is happening in all sorts of ways today. It happens when we are good parents. It happens when we love our spouse. It happens when we care for a sick or dying friend or a parent or a spouse. It happens when someone shows up and says, can I talk to you about my life? I want to tell you what's going on. And they ask us to be their shepherd. It happens when we go to someone and say, let me tell you what happened to me. I can't make sense of this. And we ask them to be our shepherd. See, here's the thing. The shepherd, regardless of who it is, is always leading to abundance. The shepherd is always leading to the green pastures, to the still waters, to the table that is set and the cup that is overflowing. It's always about getting to that place of abundance. But it's not as if abundance wasn't already there. There's always, it's always been here, right before us. Sometimes we just need someone to help us to find it, to point to it, to show us that it is already here, and to remind us of what really matters most. I think that each one of us has shepherded someone else, and that there have been times in our lives when someone has shepherded us. In our Gospel, Jesus contrasts the Good Shepherd with the hired hand. The hired hand, he says, does not own the sheep and does not care for the sheep. For the Good Shepherd, the sheep are the goal and the reason for everything that the Shepherd does. The sheep are everything to the Good Shepherd. For the hired hand, however, they are just the means to an end. The hired hand punches a clock and shows up to receive his or her wages, and when the shift is over, they're gone. If it gets too difficult or too scary or too risky, or there are too many wolves around, the hired hand takes off and runs away. The hired hand lives by quantity and not abundance. We could all probably tell a story about a hired hand in our lives, someone who, when we most needed them, ran out and left us. However, there's another side to that coin which is equally, if not more painful, that asks of us to look at our life and the times that we were the hired hand to someone else, times when we were needed and we ran out on them. So the question I think this morning is, what do you see when you look at your life? Where is the abundance? What matters about you and your life? How might the images we are given today help you to make a difference? How can they help you to live the abundant life? And what will you do with the promise of this abundance? I can't tell you what to do. Many times people have said to me, I just want some answers. Give me some answers. And I have to say, I've got no answers. Today we are offered invitations to open our eyes and to see what is promised to us. That's all that Jesus is really doing in the story. He isn't giving any answers. He says, you've got good shepherds, sheep, wolves and hired hands. But he never really says what we're going to do with it. 
It is almost as if he is saying, look at this in your life and begin to work it out. Make sense of it for yourself. There's not one right answer here. There is only each of us working it out in our own lives. Jesus is saying that we've got to open our eyes. We've got to see, we've got to take a look at the new life that he is bringing us, the abundant life that he is offering us. So what will we do with these images we're given today? I think every one of us could tell a story of a time when we were the Good Shepherd and we guided and we protected and we nourished. And we could also tell a story of how 10 minutes later we were the hired hand and we ran out. We could talk about the sheep that matter and are so valuable. And we could tell stories about the wolves that devour, snatch and scatter. It would be easy to divide this gospel simply into good characters and bad characters. But I don't think that's the point. Let's hear the story as information about our lives, without making a judgment or a conclusion, but simply as an opening or an invitation to the abundant life. I have come, Jesus says, that all of us may have life and have it more abundantly. It's his starting point and it's his goal. Abundant life is Jesus' promise to each one of us. You see, because of what Jesus has done for us, we can live without fear because our shepherd is Jesus, the good shepherd, who lays down his life for the sheep. He dies to give us new and abundant life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you have taught us to pray and to give thanks for all your people. Receive our prayers for the Universal Church, that it may know the power of your Spirit, and that all your children may agree in the truth of your Holy Word and live in unity and godly love. We pray for your servant, Daniel, our Bishop, together with Tabu, our Metropolitan, and for all other ministers of your word and sacraments, that by their life and teaching your glory may be revealed and all nations drawn to you. Guide and prosper, we pray, those who strive for the spread of your gospel and enlighten with your spirit all places of work, learning and healing. We pray for those who have authority and responsibility among the nations, that ruling with wisdom and justice, they may promote peace and well-being in the world. To this parish and to all your people in their different callings, give your heavenly grace, that we may hear your holy word with reverent and obedient hearts and serve you truly all the days of our life. In your compassion, Father, Comfort and heal those who are in trouble, sorrow, need or sickness. We praise and thank you for all your saints, for the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ, and for the heroes of the faith in every generation. And we remember before you your servants who have died, praying that we may enter with them into the fullness of your unending joy. Grant us, Holy Father, for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul. And I will trust in you, and I will trust.
We come now to the celebration of the Sacrament of the Holy Eucharist.